Howdy mates, Bracev here and uh, so I'm going to do a little demo of the soft drill I've been working on. This is the uh, Autograph 3000. So this uh, hunk of junk is built around a uh, pretty standard sort of uh, safe dial mount. There's a Lagarde 1548 in there at the moment. I've uh, taken off the back of the relocker so you can see what's going on. And then on the front of that mount I've chucked a, a chuck and a, uh, a stepper motor. Uh, so this thing can uh, spin to its heart's content. Then there's, a, there's an angle sensor on the back here that um, uses a magnet that's on the back end of the stepper shaft to tell which way it's pointing. And then uh, this here is a contact mic for taking contact point readings, funnily enough. That all runs into a USB sound card. There's a um, whole bunch of cruddy electronics to run the whole thing. And then, um, of course, it runs off a laptop and there's a, a 18 volt power tool battery there to run the motor for now. Um, since I'm away from the bench and I don't have my power supply. So let's uh, give it a burl, hey? See what we get. Hopefully that gives you a decent view of the proceedings. If I remember how to... Uh... Get everything happy. Might even do the job. Man, I really pissed something off. <sighs> oh, I've been totally hung up. Excellent. All right, we'll just pull it out, plug it back in, in the uh, time-honored fashion. All right, now we're off. Well, after that, I'm using to lose. Um, we start with crafting all the wheels in the traditional way. Uh, somewhat non-traditionally though, it's actually setting all the wheels uh, one by one before I left. Um, there's method to that madness. Um, the 1548 is uh, rather cheaply made and uh, for one the, uh, the wheels have a pretty big hole in the centre. It's bigger than the shafts that they run on. So in addition to spinning, they can slide from side to side. And which way they slide, of course, depends on which way you spin them. So uh, to avoid big variations in the contact point readings, I, uh, I go to great lengths to only uh, rotate each wheel in the same direction consistently. Um, so that takes a bit longer to dial, but it gets us better graphs. Um, and with the 1548, there's a lot of wheel shadowing because there's, uh, there's high spots on all the wheels because they're, uh, they're not, the, you know, the holes in the middle aren't in the centre. Um, conveniently though, that means that the low spot on each wheel is easy to find because it's opposite the peak. Um, so the first thing I do here is, uh, after I get this graph, then the algorithm goes and starts looking at um, which peak on the graph is coming from which wheel or wheels. Uh, and then it uh, will try and work out which combination of wheels to set to uh, opposite to which peaks uh, to get the fence as low as possible. So that's uh, the best possible starting point for graphing. Uh, so it's just sorting that out now, and then it'll choose a wheel to uh, get graphic. Alrighty, it's chosen wheel three. Like wheel three's gone into shadow there. We're not seeing any more change in the contact points. Hopefully the algorithm goes, there we go, it says that's a trough, we'll park the wheel in the middle and move on to the next one. Next up, wheel two.
pass is real slow because to uh, set wheel two in the right direction, it ends up having to set all three wheels each time. Um, I think I might uh, might try running those in the uh, the opposite order for uh, even numbered wheels in the future. Uh, sorting out the algorithms for this and getting them to read graphs even a fraction as well as a human is uh, turns out to be uh, pretty tricky. Well, uh, shock horror, right? Teaching uh, teaching computers to do uh, do things like people, but uh, there we go. Well, it looks to my eye like there's a uh, there's a gate there on the right. Let's see what uh, what my code makes of it. All right, a little vertical line. There's a gate on the right, and there's a spurious detection of a gate on the left. Uh, is that noise just dips below the uh, dips below its detection threshold? There, luckily, it's uh, it's chosen the one on the right to uh, search off. So, hopefully, we make some progress from there. Found a gate there. Just not quite deep enough for the other uh, other wheels to drop in the fence. Uh, drop in the uh, drop in the can. Anyway. So hopefully nothing goes wrong on this pass, and it will uh, whichever wheel it graphs next which will be the, uh, the one where it hasn't found a gate, it'll uh, pick up that last gate and open the lock. Doing the uh, lower parts of that wheel that was done in orange before. There we go. Opened a lock in 468 seconds.